Hey everybody, I'm Brandon 72 Mo, and welcome to my newest Looking Back series at L.A. Noir. This is a game that originally came out in May of 2011, so it's just right there at that five-year mark that I do for all of my Looking Back series. This is a game that really came out to some rather mixed reviews. Um, it was award, or it was awarded actually. It won a BAFTA. Uh, for the best original score, but as far as the game itself, the city where a, man's home a, a lot of people didn't like it. Um, I don't really know why. I kind of enjoyed it myself. Uh, I bought it when it first came out on um, PlayStation 3, I believe is where I played it. And then uh, when it came out on PC, I picked it up during a Steam sale and played it again on PC. And well, now here I am for looking back, playing it for you. Um, the way we're going to do this series is basically... Um, I will try to do one case per week, breaking it down into two videos. Some of the cases are a little bit long that you have to solve, so they may wind up being three videos, so spanning them two weeks. Uh, but I will do my best to try to break them into, into two videos so that we get through a case per week. Um, and you'll see what I'm talking about once we get into the actual video here in a minute. This is just kind of the introduction that plays, like I did for the Red Dead Redemption. Wanted to get the introductory material out of the way in an introductory video, so that when we actually start part one, we're getting right into the gameplay. Um, so that's what we're looking at right now, is just the introduction that plays with some credits. Tells you a little bit of backstory, not much, um, but it does show us a little bit of backstory. But here in just a minute, we're going to jump into uh, basically, it's a tutorial, though you do kind of do a little detective work um, and try to figure things out, and that should be coming up right now. There we go. Upon reflection. Deal with the chain of Ooh, the Marine Corps. Mistakes get made, but you deal. Yeah, you deal with them, son. Fighting for that you're on the same. One of the things I really, really do like about this game is you never know whether the guy you're. If you're not familiar with the film noir genre of cinema, um. It, it definitely has their own hallmarks, their own key things that make it a film noir film. And this game freaking nails it. Uh, there's even an option that you can go in and play it in black and white if you want to. And if you guys want to see it in black and white, let me know. I'll do a few episodes in black and white. I'll do a few episodes in color. Uh, it doesn't really impact the gameplay any. Um, but yeah, I can do it however you would like me to do that. Just let me know in the comments down below whether you prefer the uh, the film noir style of black and white or if you want to see it here in full color. But this is basically a tutorial episode. They've called for a car to respond uh, to a crime scene. And here we go. There's always a bit of a cut scene just to kind of introduce you to what's going on. Tells you what's going on. Ooh, a shooting. Peyton, a Vic? You had that Vic. Central morgue. A tall so white some guy white guy shooting, shot a black guy. So we gotta go find a gun. Okay. Give it your best shot, sure. Guys. The dead guy's a low light. I'm not expecting so basically the guy just said, eh, we don't really care if you find it or not. We're not really worried. This guy's kind of scum. But you know, awesome. Great. Wonderful. So yeah, and then this just kind of introduces us. Just <laughs> a fist the hump. It basically said a jerk off. Um, yeah, it just kind of introduces right. us to the I controls of the game, the how to play. To the um, there's music that plays it. Anything, it might be a little too quiet. We'll talk it out. But when you're at a Two crime scene, um, there's music that plays. It, it just kind of a there that ding ding, uh, kind of a haunting melody. That lets you know that there's still clues to be discovered. And so I kind of stick around the crime scene until I can get that music to stop playing. Because the more evidence that you can collect... And there we go, we've got an on-screen indicator. Um, the more evidence you can collect, the better of a case you can build when it comes time to charge somebody for a crime. Um, it's an interesting game. Uh, about the only thing I dislike about L.A. Noir is... Um, well, two things. One... That they letterbox all the cutscenes and then it goes full screen like this for the game. It it takes a little getting used to. I, I wish they wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't mind the whole game being 
just letterbox. That would have been fine by me, but whatever. Um, it just goes back and forth like that, so it's just a little weird. At least they executed it right. But as you'll see, and as you kind of saw there at the beginning of this uh, mission, or investigation, or crime scene, or whatever you want to call it, um, the cars have horrible, horrible handling. Um, worse than GTA 4. I mean, yeah, I get that this, you know, took place in an area where cars didn't really handle that well. Anyway, but still. Some of the very cool stuff about this is, unlike the GTA games, all the cars in this game are actually real cars. They they aren't based upon real cars. They are the real cars. They're modeled after the real cars. They sound a lot like the real cars. They handle a lot like the real cars. Uh, even though it's got the kind of boat really mechanic to it um, but it's just really awesome and there's a lot of really cool cars to discover um, you could like go to different areas of the map and there'll be like these different hidden cars and then you have those that are available for you to use ooh a gun I see a gun up on the roof how the hell did he see that reflection in the window dude's freaking observant our weapon I'm gonna see if I can find a just, way up there. Sure, I see All it up right. there. Don't hurt yourself. So now we gotta find a way up to the roof. But I really do like that the cars are all historically accurate, and I also like that the, the map the itself, broke. they did so we need to I remember reading out. articles when this game came out that uh Team Bondi, and then of course this is also developed in conjunction with Rockstar. I know I play a lot of Rockstar games, but Rockstar makes a lot of good games. Um, as much as I give them shit, they do make a lot of good games. Um, but anyways, they studied maps and photos and movies and just everything that they could get their hands on of L.A. during this time period. Um, do you remember exactly what year? It's post-World War II. Instead of going down a drain, our shooter hoists it up here. So, yeah, that's what we're looking at. But, um... They studied as much as they could, so a lot of the buildings are accurate. I mean, they're models. Yeah, sure, they're to scale to make you know the smaller map and all that. But the street names, you know, where things are and in relation to each other, are all damn close to accurate, which is really really cool to kind of like step back in time. Local gun store, sure. Yeah, let's go to a gun store. And maybe magically it'll just happen to be the right gun store that sold the gun to this person. Because, I mean, you know, I'm sure there's only one gun store in all of L.A. But this game, as I mentioned earlier, did come out to a lot of mixture sure of views. Really I game. think a big part of that was because well, of the film game. noir style. Um, Such a little film noir game. cinema doesn't you always have... Uh, form, like, they're... Their main characters or protagonists are usually very flawed people that, you know, you want to cheer for, but at the same time, they're, they've got things you're just like, ooh, that's not very pretty. Um, and not, like, physically pretty, but it's like behaviors or quirks or personality traits that are just really, you know, makes it a little cringeworthy. So there's that, and film noir films also usually don't have like happy endings and i'm not giving anything away about this game don't worry um Wake up, Cole. i am awake thanks so i think that was a big part of it and I, a lot of people didn't like a lot of the gameplay mechanic they thought the game was too slow um for me this is a good chill out game and it's a good like uh cerebral up, game because it gets in there and it makes you think and it tells such a great story but, and we're about to see this, there's newspapers spread out all throughout the game that, there we go, show these little kind of backstory cutscenes. Um, they, a lot of them revolve around this guy right here. I forget his name. Sheldon, I think? Um, let's see if I've got that right. Come on, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself, see if I'm right. Do it. Do it. What's your name? Yeah, the mind is the girl's great mystery ministry. Oh, here we go. Oh, I got his name. I haven't played this game in like three years on PC, but uh, yeah, I I got his name. He's Sheldon. I'm amazing. 
I know I'm being silly, Battle for but and collapse on so they show you these uh, little cutscenes uh, that have to do with this guy Sheldon uh, quite a bit because he does factor into the story. But one of the things, one of the things that people complained about is Team Bondi, as you can tell by looking at this cutscene right now. Every character in this game is completely motion captured. Even like just the extras standing around. I don't know if you noticed that during the um, intro scene uh, before this case actually started. But everybody in this game is fully motion captured. And when they were doing the dialogue, they did motion capture and then used that in the game. And it. Sometimes it works really well, and sometimes you can kind of see it's a little quirky at times. Yeah, it does look really realistic, but you get all those facial expressions and stuff, and and some of it's just a little too over the top for the game engine. I think if they were to redo something like that today with modern hardware, even just five years later, it would probably work out a lot, lot better. But, you know, still... It's pretty impressive. I remember reading about this game even before it came out. I was just excited when I read everything about it. You know, how the historical accuracy. The film noir style. I am awake. Quit telling me to wake up. The, and then the motion capture and how they were doing all of that. And they actually got some, uh, at the time, pretty big name stars. This guy Cole um, was an actor on Mad Men at the time. Which, at the time this came out, Mad Men on, I think, AMC was huge i mean that was like the show everybody was you know talking about um you know so they got some big name stars there's a character for one of my all-time favorite tv shows that shows up later in this and i'll talk about him when Wake he up, comes Paul. up but it's just really cool i mean the the list if you go to like imdb and and Bro, look at with me. the the full cast it's just insane the number of people that were involved in this who did all of the different things you'll recognize a lot of voices and a lot of faces and you'll be like i've seen that guy from somewhere and yeah probably some tv show or movie um i mean most of these people who are in this game just have a long 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 resume or portfolio i guess they call it i don't really know of things that they've been in which is just really really cool so now we're on the way to the gun store no, I'm just going to play the siren because, you know, what else am I going to do? Oh, and something else that I like about this game is, you know, you've got that tiny little map down there in the corner. And it can be hard to sometimes see where you're going. Uh, yeah, you can set destinations. But there, yeah. Whoop. Whoop. Crash. I knocked blind? the wheel off. I apparently am blind. But you could press, uh, instead of having, like, just a, a GPS marker, because obviously GPS didn't exist post-World War II. Um... You can press a button and your partner will tell you when to turn, when to go straight. I tend to use it a lot. Um, so if you get annoyed by that, I'm sorry. Oh my god, these car mechanics, or physics, are just... Take the next left. Awful. The, the cars just handle like they're... I don't know, have the next right. suspensions made of melted marshmallows or something. It's just... Is just wibbly wobbly and not like wibbly wobbly timey wimey Doctor Who. It's just the cars are all wibbly wobbly. But uh, oh hey look, it's ammunition shooting gallery open 24 hours. I mean, that basically would be ammunition because ammunition's in downtown LA. This is the gun store in downtown LA. Oh my God, the police car is smoking. <laughs> Officers Phelps. I guess that head-on collision did a bit of damage. It wasn't. Model 27 registered Magnum. Chambered for three fifty-seven. Wow, he knows a lot about this gun. With pearl grips. He knows Same a lot about this gun. <laughs> wow. You're not suggesting he's the only. Well, uh, 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 no. God, he's such a, a derpy guy. I ought to. I sold it. Ah, I how convenient. Kerpow. These babies are only available special order. Oh, that means we can find out who order ordered it. Mind if I take a look? Nice. My guest. So then this is kind of the things you have. You just kind of got to piece together clues and. Go talk to people and Model go check out crime Pearl scenes and go Pearl. search houses. You see it on there? And just follow up on leads until you solve a case. It, it's it's really cool. Um, so let's see. Pro grip, pro grip. Yeah, pro grip. There you go. And then you tap it. 
We're in luck. And then Schroeder, you get the information that gets added to your journal the gun and so that you know places. what you're doing and where you're going and Thanks, all of that gun. good Anytime. stuff. Always happy to help out the LAPD. Are you? Are you always happy to help out the LAPD? You sounded a little sarcastic about that, sir. Do we call it in? Let's see if he's at home. Owning the gun doesn't prove he pulled the trigger. No, that's true. Okay. You know, that's fair. In for a penny, wow. in for a pound. Fair lead cuff. The way, and, and there we go. In for a penny, in for a pound. Lead the way, Gunga Din. Just a lot of very period correct uh, jargon. In, in it, this, so if you like, ever watch like any old movies, you'll actually in old TV shows you'll actually hear people right. use a lot of the phrases you hear in this game. They just did a fantastic job. Oh, I think he made the next left. Oh well. Take the next right. Yeah, he meant to that. That wasn't so hard, was it? Just because oh, well. we're in uniform doesn't mean we can't use our initiative. I guess so. Well, uniform it's cops don't use initiative. Only detectives do. I mean, yeah, right now he's just a beat cop. And that's kind of another cool thing. As you go through the game and solve different cases, uh, it progresses you through different departments of uh, the police, the LAPD. So you wind up like in homicide, you wind up in arson investigation, all kinds of different cool stuff that you get to do in this game. Which is another thing that makes me enjoy it because instead of just investigating just like, you know, the same old thing over and over again, you're doing a lot of different types of cases, uh, which adds a lot of good variety. But of course it all ties together in one big story as well, so yeah get to follow uh, Cole on his journey through the LAPD and he has a different partner with each department that he winds up working with well, this car gets up and running what is this a Ford yeah it's a Ford gets up and moves man listen to that engine though go straight oh it doesn't have brakes go straight through okay slow it down slow it down slow it down shit <laughs> okay it made the corner. But I love old cars. So I kind of like playing this game because every car in this game, like I said earlier, is a real old car. Um, so for me as a gearhead, you know, seeing these cars before somebody hot rotted them 10 or 15, 20 years later or something like that, just seeing them as they were in their element, just so freaking cool. And of course, since I played on this on PC, I've got everything set to Ultra. Which occasionally it causes a little bit of stutter, as you've seen a couple times. Um, game's not optimized that well on PC, quite sure. honestly. But it looks better on PC than it does on PS3, so that's why I'm playing it on PC. It's a beautiful game. I mean, it really is. Considering this came out five years ago, it, it does not look like a five-year-old game at all. Open up! It's the police! What do you guys want? Uh, uh, we are selling Girl Scout okay. cookies. You're the owner of a Smith and Wesson. Model oh wait, no. You got a gun? Completed with pearl grips. I might be. What there you go. Don't answer any questions. I love this guy. Tonight. He gets so dramatic about stuff. I love it. You might be surprised to know. Oh, the guy works for you. I don't think you have the gun. What the fuck is going on here? You're under uh, the fuck is that. You're not taking me down. You, uh, whoa, whoa, okay, hello. Sure, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, sometimes you just get to get into a fight with people. Some of them are easier to take down than others, but, but you've got a good counter punch, and then you get grapple attacks and stuff like that, where you can, uh, get them, but sometimes the grapple attacks do fail. Oh, okay, oh, Ouch. <laughs> He's lucky he Holy shit. No, oh, is he lucky? Is he? Keep an eye on him, Ralph. I'm going to take a look around. And then every new scene, or every new location, that music starts playing again, and you get to start investigating again to look and see if there's any type of information. List of names in a series of numbers. I wonder what those names Floyd and numbers Rose's are. Floyd name is in this book. I don't know. Phelps, we can come hmm. out of this all bright and shiny with a commendation. Yeah. Or stick our schlongs in a hornet's nest. Well, you don't like putting your schlong in a hornet's nest, no? And leave the book where really? you found it. Okay, so why has he not got any initiative at all? Officer Phelps, that's 1247. Hmm. 
And then we go to autosave and wait for a long, long loading screen. Hello? Oh, there it is. And then uh, after some of the uh, cases, when they're re resolved, or sometimes even in the middle of them, you go to some flashbacks for Cole, which I believe that's what this one is. It's like right before the war. Um, yeah, this is yeah, this is right before the war for him. Like I said, I played this game through completely twice, so I am familiar with it. So at least I, it won't be all completely new to me. But there's parts I've forgotten about. But it's just kind of cool that you get to see his current story and kind of really explains who he is now. Excuse me, Sergeant, but... Excuse me! Fuck you! Grab me, big toy soldier! Wow, yeah, that's definitely a drill, Sergeant. I'm having a bad day, Private. Yeah, are you having a bad day? Why are you having a bad day? Can you believe this? Did your toilet get backed up? You took the biggest shit of your life and it wouldn't flush. Then it overflowed on your floor. And then you found out your wife is fucking the neighbor's dog. The Japanese will do the world a favor. Come here, give me a twenty. On report. What are your fucking report? What? Phelps, Kelso, Merrill. Why am I on report? Any other gentlemen for OCS? OCS. What is that? Officer school. OCS is at Elliot. Huh. You take the Camp Elliot bus over there. This bus is for MCRD. This bus is for men who want to fight. Oh. Asshole. Where are Jules Sergeant Todd's assholes? Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this episode, guys. If you enjoyed this video, well, you know what to do. In the meantime, I'm Brandon72Mo, and I'll see you in the next video.